Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In this video, we'll discuss how to deploy a React.js application to Azure DevOps using Docker as a medium and how to create a release pipeline to facilitate this process. There was actually a video before this one where we did a lot of the setup. We created a repo, we created our project on Azure DevOps. We then created the Docker files like the Docker Ignore the Docker Compose and the Docker file itself, which is used to generate the Docker image. We then created the pipeline over here using this, this YAML file. Okay, let me just open this up. So this YAML file was generated and this YAML file makes it, basically makes it so that whenever we make an update, like we make a commit to this GitHub repo, it's gonna run this pipeline, which you can see that we ran this in the last video and it was a success and it generated over here. I'm in portal.azure right now. So this is our container registry and you can see that it generated this Docker image successfully. Okay, so this is our current progress. And if you are coming into this for the first time and you have your Docker files and everything ready, you can continue as is with the video. But if you haven't done any of that yet and you're a complete newcomer with nothing set up yet, so I advise you to go back and watch the first video, okay, and follow along until you reach this point. So let's begin. We're going to go into releases over here on our Azure DevOps website on the dashboard. So click on releases, then we're going to create our first release pipeline. This is going to be responsible for deploying our application, okay, on a live website. The Docker image is, is created but now we need to deploy the website, make it live. So we're gonna select Azure App Service Deployment. This is a, a nice template that we can use. So give this something more meaningful, a more meaningful name, like deploy website. Then we need to add an artifact. An artifact is basically the output of the CI pipeline and the input of the CD pipeline. Just select the pipeline that we created in the previous step that deploys our Docker image to Azure Container Registry. Click on Add. Now we go to Tasks. And over here, we need to select an Azure Service Connection or an Azure Subscription. So I'm just gonna select mine. But if you don't have one here, so you can click on Manage, then New Service Connection, then Azure Resource Manager, then just click Next on all the default settings, then select the resource group like Tutorial, give it a name of your choice and then it's going to create one and then it'll show up over here. Okay. So now this app type is important. If we were deploying this without Docker, we would pick either one of these two options, the first two options, but we are doing Docker. So we're going to do for containers. Okay. Emphasis on containers. So service name. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, I know what we need to do here. So we're gonna go back here and I need to go to app services over here. And we need to create, this, these are my other projects. So we need to create a web app over here. Okay, so here we're gonna select our resource group tutorial, give it a name. And this is, the name's important because it's gonna appear over here, uh, it's going to be part of our URL. So t tutorial website, not a big deal since this is just a t tutorial for me. So I'm just going to click on Docker container, keep the uh, OS as Linux. Then I'm make, I pick the free tier always, because again, this is just a t tutorial, but you may wish to change that. All right. Click next. Let me just quick go through these. You can just do review and create directly at this point, or actually wait, maybe not. Um, we don't need a database. Container registry. And then we need to select our registry. Okay. That we created earlier. Okay. Okay. I know how to fix this. So I just need to go here. So you need to go to your container registry 
tutorial website over here. Now you need to look for, I think it's in repository and click on this. Oh, actually, no, it's not in here. I just need to try and remember where this setting was. Somewhere in here is the admin setting and there we go. Okay, so it's in properties. So just click on this and that's it. All right, close. Okay, it's not saved. Oh, click on save over there. And done. And by the way, just this is important. Copy this. We're going to need it. So go back to here. And this is annoying. We should have done this earlier because it's not, not really going to refresh now. So what I'm going to do is just go back to app services and, and I'm going to have to do this again. So just quickly repeat tutorial website, Docker and hold on tutorial over there and everything else the same continue, continue, and container registry, then tutorial website, and it works. Okay, good. So it's also de detected the tag. The tag is kind of like the build number. So um, if you look at repositories, you can see that, you know, the tag changes as you build. Okay, so it's going to increase as you keep different build, as you keep building. So we know this is working correctly. And then just proceed okay and okay proceed 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 and we're good okay review and create create now we're done now again this might take some time to appear like this is deploying but it might take a little bit of time to appear over here let's just refresh and hope it does appear quickly. This is my other other project, so don't get confused. Okay, so I paused the video for about 10 minutes until it refreshed and actually showed me my app service. It might take longer for you. It took longer for me the first time. So let me just show you here that, you know, this is our web app. It's working. And you can see that it says uh, browse. If you click on browse, it's not going to show you anything because there isn't anything deployed on the service. So I'm just going to close this for now. So come over here and uh, here we need to, let me just show you, go to repositories. Um, hold on. Click on overview in your container registry and copy this. Okay. Just, or just click on this, copy and put this over here you're going to put over here the name of the repository that you put over here okay so just go to container registry go to repositories copy the name of your repository put it over here now that's it we're done let me just review everything it looks all right click on save okay and i think we're done Click on create release and let's just make this, well, never mind. That's if you want to do it manually. So let's just let this run automatically and release one has been created. Click on release one over there and this should begin running. It's queued right now. Let's see how it goes. Let's go to the logs. They're a bit more detailed. All right, so I paused the video because it was taking a while. So as you can see, everything is green and it's working. So let's go over to here. Now you can see down here, this is our web app. You can see the domain over here. Click on the domain and hopefully it should work. There we go. Great. Awesome. So there we have it. Our application has been deployed using Docker. There's some important things we need to discuss before we end the video. So let's just go through those. So first of all, come here and activate the continuous deployment trigger. You're almost always going to want this on because if you don't have this on, then it's not going to automatically run whenever the CI pipeline executes and a new build is produced. You'll have to come here and manually run it. So 
turn this on and it'll automatically redeploy the website with the updated changes. Okay, just to recap, you make a change on your local computer to your code, you push it to GitHub, GitHub triggers the CI pipeline in Azure, then this triggers, uh, if this triggers on, then it's gonna trigger the release pipeline, okay? You can also come over here into pre-deployment uh, conditions. I, I already have this on that I'm gonna approve it. Um, again, that's your choice. And you can also do other stuff like release gates and stuff, and that adds like a delay. And there are other different things that you can add over here, all kinds of cool stuff that, that we're not gonna discuss in this video, maybe in some other video. Okay, so I'm just going to show you guys how this entire process is gonna, is gonna be. I'm gonna go over to my local, local code and then just make a minor change over here, like change this from login to your account to sign into your account. So I'm gonna do git add dot git commit and trigger CI CD. That's the commit message. I'm gonna push this change. Then I'm gonna go over, okay, that's done. So I'm gonna go over here Let me just refresh. There's something I'm looking for there. So here is the action being performed. The extension that I covered in the, in the previous video, this, is, this extension is responsible for propagating the change that has occurred in GitHub to Azure DevOps. So let's go to Azure DevOps and go to our pipeline. Okay, you can see that it's, it's executing. This is a new run. Let's just go over here. This is going to take about a minute, so I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Okay, so this has been executed successfully. Now, if I go over to releases, we'll see that a new release has been created. But because I had the pre-deployment approval on, then there's uh, this, I need to approve it. And the interesting thing is that I actually just received an email on my phone about this uh, deployment. That's what the pre-deployment approval does. You want to do this in industries, maybe uh, big companies, where you need a, a set amount of approvals before a new change is pushed, okay? But if, obviously, if you want to make this automatic, fully automatic, without manual intervention, you can turn this feature off. So just click on Approve, and this is going to deploy it. So here our website is deployed and successful. So if you go over here, you'll see our changes have reflected. I actually paused the video for about five minutes because it takes time for the changes to reflect. Even when it says succeeded over here, it's still gonna take some time for the you know, entire propagation to be done in the backend. And the more bigger your application is, the longer it could take. So don't panic if it takes some time, all right? Now, um, this is where the video ends. But I do want you to know that um, there's going to be many videos in the future. For, so I'm hoping you guys subscribe to the channel. There's going to be things like UI testing, unit testing, and then many other things that we can do with Azure. And then many other, um, you know, variants of this video where we discuss how to set up, uh, you know, this entire process with, for example, a server side rendering React application or a React application with an express server. So we're going to have many videos like this. And if it's something you guys want to see, you can comment it down in the, in the comment section below. All right. See you guys in the next video. Bye then.